I made record labels so much money off my body. I made a lot of people so much money off my body. And I got the smallest cut off my own fucking body and my own work and my own ideas. And I don't think I have to say sorry about the fact that I want to commodify my own shit. It's been commodified and I wasn't even the main fucking benefactor of it. So fuck this. Iggy Azalea is here. I met her last night, I randomly, know, coincidentally. The basketball. The basketball. <laughs> yeah. I looked over and I was like, wait, what? I'm meeting you tomorrow. So it was kind of nice. No, it was good. I think it was good to break the ice. Yeah. You just launched the OnlyFans and there's a lot of like hustling, but I also mm-hmm. read that you made a shit ton of money last year. God bless. I did. Thank you. Yeah. Love that so much for you. It was funny because <laughs> when I did do the OnlyFans thing, everyone was like, she must be doing so bad, down bad. And I was like, definitely not down, definitely not doing bad. But it's funny to me. I thought that was so funny seeing that reaction. And I knew I would obviously get that reaction. But it just was funny to me because I was like, oh, you can't possibly like conceive the notion that a woman would want to do this of her own volition and not because it's out of necessity. That's interesting. Right. They're immediately we're calling you desperate, basically. Yeah. And I'm like, it's funny to me that you view sexuality that way. That's not my take. So why did you why did you decide to sign up for OnlyFans? And like you're launching like a whole project. It's not yeah, just like it was you, more about the project. Yeah. Honestly, the project came first, and then the platform for it made sense. I guess if okay. that makes sense, because I've always kind of been anti OnlyFans for myself creating an account. I like OnlyFans, and I'll retweet the girls and shit because they seem like they're having a blast. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, and I'm like, get your money. But I didn't feel that it seemed creative, so that was why I never could see myself on there Mm -hmm. because I only want to do things that are interesting and creative. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do things just for the sake of making money at this point in my life. Well, partly because you don't have to. I don't have to. I have the luxury of not having to. I really, for years, I've wanted to do like a big visual. I hate just calling things a coffee table book, but I guess that's where books like that live. Mm -hmm. We took so many pictures over the last two years being on the road and I have so many things that are so cool that I just feel, I don't know that social media is where I just want this to end up living. Like, It just seems so informal. I want something that encapsulates this in a better way. And being an artist as well, and then also taking a break from music, I felt sometimes like my persona or the persona that you unintentionally create or that people's perception of you can feel so one dimensional that there's not necessarily always the space for you to break out of that or to be a like multi-faced person. Mm -hmm. I felt that there were so many different sides to me or the creative things that I wanted to do that I just knew didn't really lend themselves necessarily to music or my direction and what I wanted to do there. And I love visuals. So I was like, maybe it is making a book. Maybe I can put some of these things in. I want to work with other artists. I want to do visual art stuff, not just photography. I want to do a bigger concept. Like mixed media. Mixed media. But I'm like, Because you're also going to fun. kind of be maybe releasing music on there. Is that? Yeah, okay. not necessarily on there, but I will have. Th- I'm releasing music. Yeah. In the world. But there will be things on there that stay. We need to go back. I need to know why you stopped doing music. Why did I stop? Well, I really stopped for that reason. I stopped making music because it fell in ways that it was redundant. Okay. I didn't really know at the time how to grow and show that I've grown as a person or like just as a woman or in my age or my life experiences. And I didn't really understand how to incorporate that in a way that was still interesting, especially when I know I'm mostly talking to much younger people um, that are listening to me. And it's like, how do I talk about if I sit in a studio and someone says, what do you want to write about today? I'm want to write about what I experience and my life, but it might be a little bit too grown. Really? Is that true? That's how I felt. Okay. I don't think it is true, but that's how I felt. Why? Like you want to talk about your son? Just being a new mom or going through relationships or things like that. At the time I felt like, well, how is this somebody that's 19 going to relate to that? Or what Mm. is it that they're going to see out of that? I don't want to isolate them. So I created this perpetual like Peter Pan version of myself that could never really grow, which is of my own making. Right. And because of that, it got redundant. Like I made it redundant. And there's always so much negativity that comes with it. And that's okay. But for me to like endure the negativity, I need to really believe in it. I need to feel really excited about it. I need to feel it's a fair trade-off. And I didn't feel excited about that trade-off. You mean like if you're going to put yourself out there and you're going to be open to the criticism, you better like ride for the shit you're putting out there. You got to ride for the shit. Such an important lesson. I want to do this so bad. And I was like, I just don't want to do this so bad. Because people have so many opinions and they tell you what you should do. I don't even mean that. I mean like management even. And like, I'm sure with music, it's crazy. 
Yeah. The business of it too. You want to be successful at what you're doing, but you want to be innovative. You want to be yourself, but you want to be relatable to everybody. And you want to say something that the whole world resonates with, but yet is deeply personal. It's very it's complicated. It's fucking hard. It's but complicated. So I, I applaud anyone that's able to do it. It's. I think most people just accidentally do it. Totally. Uh, I don't know. I, don't I know feel like you, you were so intentional. With I am everything. intentional, but also I'm intentional every time and it doesn't mean it works every time is my mm. point. Like I'm intentional everything that I do, but I might do 10 intentional things and only two of them resonate with people because I can't predict that. That's art though. That's, that's like art, music. Yeah. That's that's why you have to do it for the love of just doing, doing it. it. Mm. So what changed? When were you like, okay, I'm going to do, it's called Hotter Than Hell, right? The Hotter book. Than Hell? Yeah. yeah. I've been thinking about it for a while. Once I started to see some of the pictures and things come along and- Pictures you had taken. Yeah. Pictures yeah. and artist collaborations and stuff. And I was like, fuck, you know what? Like, why not make this musical too? We kept wanting to add musical things to it. Mm. And I kept going back to producers and stuff I like and getting them to make me stuff. I was like, why wouldn't, why not make, why not add music into something that's already multimedia? Yeah. Like, fuck it. Why not? I'll do it. Oh, that's your original shit yeah exactly exactly <laughs> That's I'm like your thing. maybe this is, and then it kind of clicked with me where I was like maybe this is the evolution that I was looking for mm. maybe this is how I incorporate these things or my growth as a person maybe this is the thing that I was looking for to make me be able to really ride behind it we'll talk about being innovative too it's like a, such a new thing yeah it's yeah. cool and it was scary in a way when I pick, sat on OnlyFans I thought about that for about like four or five months actually and I'm someone that's always will show my breasts or show nudity or I don't really have a problem with being like overtly sexual um, when I'm in control of it or I feel that it has artistic merit and I just knew I wanted to do certain things in this project that I felt how will they see it when everything's so censored on every platform it makes sense that it would go here wait so are you posting nudes yes okay. but I don't show I don't show vagina right but like there's boobs and Sick. there's butt and <gasps> I am naked yeah I'm naked can I ask you a question yes are you, are you making so much money I'm making so much money that I won't even say how much it is that's so sick I, I love that so much for you I've been thinking about too. starting one I feel really happy with my decision too everything that I felt in terms of my nervousness about it or my hesitancy mm. within two days of doing it it went out the window hell yeah, yeah. you I'm like so owned it I'm glad I did this I mean here's the thing is like, but it's not for everyone no but like but, you and I have commodified or I mean honestly yeah. most women like we've already commodified like exactly. our bodies and exactly. our images this is just more direct on Instagram I you agree. like post things you maybe get followers and then you hope a deal comes later well exactly you know that is the game where right. you're constantly posting hoping a brand will come and say you are so cool want to wear these underwear campaign for me mm -hmm. want to do this thing and it's just like why am I depending on other people to commodify me yeah it's kind of like already, cutting out the middle man yeah it cuts out the middle way. man and, but creatively too I like that it cuts out the middle man because I have more interest in doing my own campaign if you see it that way than going and wearing somebody else's stuff which can be fun too sometimes but it's not your vision at the end of the day and totally. it's fun to play a role for somebody else's vision as well I find that fun too, but I have my own vision and I want well, to do it. Well, when you said control earlier, that spoke it's to me control. so much. When you're first starting out, you don't have, have none, as much control. None. Oh, God. You have no power. You have no way of yeah. kind of controlling your image. Which is the your... irony with the OnlyFans thing where I'm like, mm. it's funny that you think I have no control now because I have the absolute, all the control. It's almost like a, a take two of it in a way for me as well, where I've, I'm doing something new for myself in a way that I don't have to compromise on. Where we're like sort of the same age and we both have young babies. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm a much better person now that I have a child because it gave me so much more patience. And also it in a way forced me to really like evaluate what I'm doing and my intention and everything that I do. How come? Because I just want to make sure that I make a human that's good. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> there are so many things that goes into that. So that's why I'd say I'm always much more intentional with everything that I do now because of having a son. I, I want him to see what I'm doing and be in a way proud of me. That's such a simple thing to say, no, but in a I way it's it like is leading like, by example. Yeah. I just know with my mother, I wouldn't have the career I have now if I didn't have the mother I had because I wouldn't have the guts to do all the stuff I do. What was your mom like? My or mom what is, kind of mom is your mom? She's just the kind of mom that is so encouraging. Mm. No matter what I do, it's just like, oh my God, it's the best thing ever. And I see her do it now with my grandson, with her grandson. 
Hmm. where it's like, of course, I had the audacity to dream to do something this big because I had someone gassing me up so much that I really thought it wasn't that big of a dream. Hmm. I had, she had deluded me in a good way, though. Yeah. And I think it's important she that you do you that confidence. sometimes with your children. Yeah. Like sometimes they need a bit of false mm -hmm. sense of confidence when they're first starting out with a crazy idea. Like, And she really got behind my crazy ideas and she let me have them, even though I don't think she thought that I would be a successful rapper. We've talked about it in retrospect, but she's like, That's but so it's funny. what you wanted to try to do. And there's no harm in that. How you old were you, you when are? you started rapping? In between like 13, 14 type age. And was she into rap? music or yeah I mean she liked rap music mm. she liked whatever I liked she really likes she likes fucking like ABBA and cute they had to be subjected to a lot of Ricky Martin oh my god cute yeah I love that a lot her. of Ricky Martin was happening <laughs> but my mom was like a hot bitch like I remember picking my mom up from getting fake boobs she had a belly button pissing I went with her to get it and she tried to deny that to me we were talking about it a few months ago and she was like that's not true and I was like did you not go to the doctor's office next to the fish and ship shop and we went up the stairs and then he put the fucking ring in and it was turquoise and she's like, she was like, okay, all I right. Went, I remember <laughs> yeah. used to sunbathe topless in a tiny little micro bikini. Like hot, you're sick. a hot bitch. Is she a single mom? Well, she was for a little while, okay. but she was with my father. She has two kids, me and my sister with my father. And it split when I was about eight or nine and she did her thing. She had her moment in the sun and then she <laughs> got remarried and she's still remarried now, happily remarried. Good um, for her. And I, I have love a, that. a brother. She had one more kid. I liked seeing her be liberated like that, I guess. I just, and well, she's not judgmental like that. Yeah. She lets me do what she thinks this whole thing is cool. She has no yeah. issue with anything I've ever done. Wait, so you were talking about your mom's moment in the sun post-divorce. Do you feel like you're having that moment in the sun? Yeah, I do. I really I do. That. I love my 30s so much. Me too, bitch. Oh my God. I just <laughs> I love it. I joke all the time about being an old, decrepit bitch, but I really mm. don't think I am one in reality. I actually don't think your 30s are old at all, and I actually love it so much more. You just having the confidence to tell people no and not feel bad about it does wonders for you, doesn't it? Fuck. Period. And it's I so didn't much have better. I didn't in my 20s. Either. I didn't even know how to tell people I didn't really like my hairstyle. Right. <laughs> like, no, truly. I felt bad to be like, like, but you're burning all my hair off and I can't, Literally, I don't even have like the confidence to tell you you're, like, I'm fully bald. suffering. Yeah, like I just couldn't advocate for myself a lot of the time. And I don't feel like I have a problem advocating for myself It's so anymore. weird how that switched for me. I, it, it was hard because I turned 33 months after my son was born. So it's hard to say like what the... I turned 32. I, really? Yeah, my, I'm born in 1990. I had my son in April 2020 and I turned okay. 30 June 2020. So oh, it wait, was when's a your real birthday? June 7th. That's my birthday. Your birthday's June 7th? <laughs> yes. Is I did really? not know that. Wait, are you born in 1990? 1991. Oh, shit. Wow. We're born on the same day. You're a crazy fucking Gemini. Yeah. What's up, bitch? <laughs> I don't really totally believe in signs, but no, like but with Gemini's, it's and yeah, <laughs> we share a birthday with Prince. That's great. We do. It's we a do. really good birthday. It's an amazing birthday to have birthday. because Prince is epically cool. And also, it's like the start of the summer. Well, for me, it was always the start of the winter in oh, Australia, and I would be so depressed. But now that I live in America, I'm so happy it's about so my fun. birthday. Everybody wants to party. They're like, you know let's what? go. I would always say, I have the best birthday because I'm literally in the middle of the year so my presents when I was a kid I'd be like they're perfectly spaced oh, out oh from Christmas they're to, six mm. months exactly six months from Christmas to birthday so I always would be so glad I was born in June when I was a kid no it's a great it's a great birthday it's okay birthday so we're now. twins so we understand now that we've, un now that <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, established yeah. so that. I understand how you yeah. feel I felt um, the same way it was so many changes happening where I think your 30s they get hyped up as some transformational moment and maybe they aren't in the moment of you turning 30 but I do think that your 30s are transformational in terms of just your life path and things that generally change or your thinking or those things and then having a child as well at the same time as that you're going through that anyway I think that it's really it's it re intense. you reassess everything it's intense and then you just kind of also it's like, like a release you're like now I'm 30 like I'm not, I'm not I've crossed that line I mean also for I will say we probably had similar experiences where you're like okay I'm established I have a baby like yeah. a lot of the reason that you, I don't know, for me, I was like, one day I'll have a child. One day I have a family. And I'm like, well, check. <laughs> you know, I did yeah. that. And um, I don't know. I like being a single mom. I do too. Yeah. It's funny. Everybody sometimes views it as like, oh, poor you. And I'm like, I'm fucking good. I'm 
love in my life. That's I'm how I very feel too. happy and okay. Uh, my grandma, she prays every night to some saint that I'll like find someone. And I'm like, you really don't have to do that. You're I'm like, okay. I'm good, and grandma. And if I wanted somebody, I have a lot of choice. I'm I love okay. That so much for you. I'm spoiled for choice. Are it's you okay. dating? No, not really right now. Okay. I dated a little bit last year and it was fun, mm-hmm. but I just I'm sorry, so how long have you been I'm single? Doing. I've been single since 2020, since okay. early 2020. Okay. Like right after I had my son, oh, I left his lot. father within the third week. Wow. Talk about a crazy time. Really moment. intense. My brain wasn't functioning at that point. Neither was mine, but I had something happen one day with my son's father and me. And it just was like one of those moments where you're just like, I didn't wake up thinking this would be what my day would be. But by the end of the day, I was on a plane to Los Angeles and I never went back. And that was the end of the, that. Yes. Don't get me wrong. We had a volatile relationship and you know that you're not an idiot. You know, you know when something's not working. Yeah. I knew it wasn't working but I also had just had a baby it was COVID there were a lot of things to navigate for me at that time and I didn't think I'd be leaving when I left if that mm. makes sense so it was all very it's really brave I think when after I had my son it's like you know you do feel this kind of pressure to like keep a family together even if it's oh, not the values percent. or you know I think for me though my father and my mother had such a volatile relationship that I wish I had seen less of it. Mm -hmm. And so that was what happened to me in that moment that I had on that day. I was like, I will never let my son see this because I don't want him to see someone talk to me this way too, but because I don't want him to ever learn this. I don't want him to be exposed to this. And even though I felt that I was in a bit of a toxic cycle, a lot of a toxic cycle with this person, that I'm in ways participating in or I'm accountable for the ways I participate in it. I just felt in that moment, like I have to to be more accountable for myself into what I'm doing with my child. And even if there are days where I want to go back to this, because mm-hmm. you all have, un- everyone has that unhealthy shit in relationships. I just never would do it. It just was like, no. Wow, it sounds like it was like an instant switch. You like had your yeah, son I and just you was looked like, at no. him and were like, this is a completely new perspective no, and I don't have I time for this I will never bullshit. do it. Nope. No, no, no. I'm leaving. I think people, especially people love to judge mothers. and Oh, so much. So Anytime much. I post a picture, where's your son? Yo, I get that too. It drives and me insane. And it's funny because I'll be like, he's literally here. Yeah, totally. He's like, he's, he's out just of frame. not in the picture because yeah. you're a fucking weirdo. And yeah. I have to protect him from you. But he's very much here. Or he's asleep. And I don't mean... <laughs> like he's in bed. And also, and also, but also, if he weren't here... That's okay too, because I'm an individual person and he's an individual person. And what's actually healthy, healthiest is for me to keep living my life as an individual entity because we're not actually intertwined together forever. And it would mm-hmm. be so unhealthy to have that level of codependency with each other for me and for him because it wouldn't make him an independent person. He would have separation anxiety. He would have all these things. I'm making him better and more healthy and me more healthy and better mm-hmm. too by us having sometimes our space. And I don't mean that I just don't see my son for days, but yeah. I'm talking about what you're talking about, where sometimes I do want to go have dinner with my friends mm-hmm. and I'll stay up and come back at two o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and he's at home in bed and he's taken care of and that's okay. It's okay to have time for yourself. It's healthy and it's better for your child too. A hundred percent. And I think there's so much with Actually, I want to bring it back to kind of the only thing, thing, fans thing, because when I became a mom, it was like posting a sexy pic, like immediately everyone yeah. makes a comment. It's like, you're a mother now is the vibe. Your child will see this. And I can't believe that. I should have seen that one coming, but I'm yeah. like, what? They're like, you're still a sexual person and you also are a mom. Like, my brain is broken. Okay, I have a question because I've been specifically thinking about this because okay. I'm dating and I'm like, what happens is I'll like, you know, hang out with someone and then I'm like, I have notes. <laughs> I have thoughts about who you are as a person and I'm not going to give them to you because it would be straight up rude. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to walk away from this. And it's a weird thing where you're like, I have all these no. Thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> but you're like, I shouldn't give them to Would them. you like to know? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm like, I do you know. want me to tell you? I know. I used to maybe say it too in mm-hmm. my Me too. In the past. In relationships, I'd be like, this thing about you, this thing about you. But I'm like, I don't actually need you to change. No. In re- I'm going to remove myself from the situation. And if you want to know why, do I have I'll to tell you? you? Yeah. I'll let you know if you ask. 
I had a conversation with someone about that that I was dating on the phone the other day and we spoke for a long time about it because we still talk and we're still friends, mm. you know, casual friends. And somehow we got to talking about what went wrong. Mm. And I was like, no, you know, it was just this and blah, 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 blah. And we, I finally did, get, like, I was honest about it. We had this conversation. It was actually a really good conversation. How did they take it? It was funny because they were like, no, I actually am kind of like discovering some of these things and I see how that you would feel that way. Like, it's valid. I want to change some of these things, not to be with me, but right. just that they felt that they, as a person, wanted to grow. And it's weird how you can have those conversations as a friend, but not really as yeah, a Yeah, the relationship is so offensive sometimes. And I was like, you know, and I said to him, I was like, that's cool if you want to do those things. I personally think you should because I think you would experience life in a better way. And I think you'd be happier if you did those things. Yeah. I'm not saying that because I think those things would make you be the person for me. I think you'd just be a happier person. But also, if you don't do those things, it's still okay. I feel like okay. you have a very good perspective of just doing what you want and not being worried about how you're perceived. You can't be because no matter how much you worry about it, someone's always going to perceive it the way they do. You basically like grew. I feel like I watched you like grow up and like transform. Yeah, and be a woman. <laughs> be a woman, but also you you just had like I also the thing about live shows and stuff, it's like anyone can film oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah. And the way that we talk about women's bodies and yep. the way they look, it's yep. so and for you to have the reaction, I mean, I feel like you just did what you needed to do to make yourself feel good. Yeah, I did. And, and I don't feel bad about it either. Yeah. That's so nice. So many people don't feel that way. They have a lot of shame about like, The thing you know? for me was this, any cosmetic change I made, I had always thought about those changes. Let's talk about my breasts, for example. Like I said, like I come from a very like body positive, sex positive group of women that raised me. And I remember getting my mom from her breast augmentation <laughs> and she was really fucking happy about it. Right. And I was happy for her and I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, it didn't, and it didn't create some like insecurity in me where I felt I wanted to have breasts because I know that's where this will automatically go on the internet. It was, what I, but I it wasn't that. That yeah. wasn't my takeaway from it. My takeaway from her doing that was that she finally felt that she could do something for herself now that she didn't have to answer to somebody else. And we've spoke about it later in life and she was telling me how she'd always wanted to do that, but she had to wait for her moment to feel that she could be unapologetic about what she wanted for herself. And funnily enough, it's funny that you have to be unapologetic about what you want for your own body. The irony. Well, the know? shame. There's just so yeah, much shame baked me, into it. For me, it was that when I started to be in the spotlight, I wanted to make these changes. I didn't have the money to make these changes. Mm -hmm. Then I had the ability financially to do them, but I was conscious about the shame of making them and well also for you people saying that I only wanted to make them because of the pressure of the, for the exterior yeah. yeah and I'm like no I didn't get into Hollywood and now I want to make these changes mm. or you're addicted to plastic surgery that, that happens a lot and I'm like no I'm not I haven't had plastic surgery in a long time I like, changed what I wanted to change yeah. I'm really happy with the changes they went really well I'm really glad that I did that. I feel really good about them. And I almost didn't do them because of what I knew everybody would say, actually. And I was talking to the, the surgeon about my breasts and I had said, I had gone with a friend who was getting something done and I was tagging along as the support person. And when I was there, I just got the courage to say like, what, what are you taking a look at this? Um, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I don't want any now. I'll wait until I have a child. And he was like, oh, why do you want to wait until then? You know, and I said, oh, well, because I have to lie to everybody. And I have to oh. pretend that it's my breast got bigger after I had a child. So I'll have to wait to be able to do what I want with my own body until I can lie about it. Obviously. He was like, well, why don't you want to just enjoy what you want now? I thought about that for a few weeks after he had said that to me. And I was like, he's right. Why do I have to be so apologetic about what I want to do with my own body? Why do I have to wait to enjoy things the way I want to? And like what you see why? in the mirror. Yeah, like why? And then I did it. And I, and when I did it too, I thought I would try to cover it up or I would lie about it. Or I, I, didn't, I didn't think I'd lie. I thought I'd just say no comment. Right. And after I did it, I felt like, fuck you guys. I'm not going to let you talk about this or whisper about it or make it bigger than it is because it shouldn't be bigger than what it is. I did what I wanted to do with my own body and I did it. I don't feel ashamed about it. You shouldn't try to shame me for it. And I don't want other women to feel that they constantly have to hide about whatever they want to fucking do too, whether it's that you want to dye your hair or if you want a pair of fake tits or it's that you don't like your job or you whatever it is that you want to do. Right. It's not just physical. It's not just physical. Yeah. I just was like, I refuse 
to live like this anymore. Fuck this. Do you feel like celebrities and people in general should be more open about it? I I like don't know how I feel about that. I feel two ways about it because mm-hmm. the way that it gets twisted and stuff, sometimes even for me, I've been like, should I have just not? Hmm. Because I hate the way that this is what becomes of you. She looked great with her fake breasts. You know, it's Mm. like you could never get, then that is you. And I don't like the way they do that to women particularly. You are not your body. Yeah, You're not. And I really hate that it gets boiled down to that. So I understand and feel empathetic and never would judge somebody that chooses not to. I think just like it's your choice to do what you want with your body, it's your choice if you want to share what you did or not either. You don't owe it to anybody to tell them. I feel that same way too. If you want to lie about it, lie about it. Privacy is also important. It's optional. You do not have to share that you did anything cosmetic or not. You don't have to share anything about yourself Mm -hmm. that you don't want to share. But I hope that if you're not sharing, I hope it's not because... You're ashamed. You're ashamed. Yeah. The thing that pisses me off is this around the stigma of OnlyFans. What do you think we've been doing? Like we've been commod, like I said to you, we've been commodifying our image and our body. I so I don't understand why people the thing all the time. It's not in a judgmental way, but you could be selling that. You could be selling that. Period. You could be selling that. You could be selling that. You're just doing the same thing for free. And that's okay, by the way. Mm-hmm. You don't totally. have to commodify it. Of course not. If you don't want to put a monetary but thing on it. Sometimes you are commodifying But it is being commodified anyway. in some way. That's what I'm saying. If you don't want to intentionally make it monified then and have a monetary income on it in that, in that direct way, that's okay. But it is being commodified when you post it and you put it out, it's already commodified in some way. I think it's just kind of comes down to sexism, right? Because you're basically saying like these women who are so blatantly monetizing this aspect, their body, the way they look, they're sluts. I don't even care. Sluts has been thrown at me so much. I actually find Mm. it comical now. Yeah. Amber Rose was on the podcast and she was talking about this. You know, you see an actress get naked for a film and everyone's like, oh, she's amazing and da da da. And they're not like, oh, she pulled her boobs out and like now she's having all these crazy things come her way because like people like like that yeah but if you see it on Instagram then like everyone's like oh she's a hoe it's the context of all isn't it yeah Yeah. and it's an unfair context it is really unfair and um it just boils down to me thinking I'm like people just love a a reason to shame women I agree (laughs) I really do I'm sorry like I I just think that I made record labels so much money off my body I made a lot of people so much money off my body and I got the smallest cut off my own fucking body and my own work and my own ideas and I don't think I have to say sorry about the fact that I want to commodify my own shit it's been commodified and I wasn't even the main fucking benefactor of it so fuck this this is a story of my life (laughs) I want control over this and because why not this is the way the world works we might as well just acknowledge it and I enjoy I enjoy it I'm gonna do it anyway Mm. that's the thing I'm doing it anyway I'm gonna do it anyway I'm gonna post pictures like that anyway because I like it and I think they're beautiful and I like my breasts Mm -hmm. fuck sorry and yeah they're fake and they look fucking good and I like (laughs) them and I'm happy with them and I like my body I liked my body before I liked my face before and I like it now it's and I, I like myself. I never didn't. I never hated myself. I don't know. I'm fucking weird. I like to change shit. I'm weird. I like to tinker. Fuck. I don't know. You know, I I think that OnlyFans is actually more hilarious than anything else, to be honest with you. Although it is a bigger art project for me, but the conversational part of it and getting into that has been very interesting because... You mean the messages? The messages are interesting. <laughs> You mean funny? Some of them are funny. Some of them are sad. Some of them scare the shit out of me. I feel all different types of ways about what I see on there, but all but it's wildly entertaining and in a way almost addicting because you just don't know what you're going to log on and look at every day. Some men on there I think are really nice and just want to talk. Yeah. And I relate to that. And some men have interesting fetishes that you're like, Whoa, the amount of men will, that want me to tell them that they're a piece of shit and want me to s- and send me money for that. I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. I've gotten a bit into that. That's I like fun. it more than I thought I would. I love that for you. I really like it. Maybe that's the new era. That'll be your your 30s will my, be like. My dom era? Mm-hmm, I'm into that. I don't know. I think maybe there's something about it that I really like because I feel like I've had so much power taken away from me for a 
for a lot of my life that there's something about that with men being able to just tell them you're a piece of shit and I would never fuck you dirty little piece of shit oh disgusting like and, and then they finally... give me money for it I'm like I don't know something about that I, I guess mean, I don't feel I don't bad because I'm bad like we're both about getting that. what we want out of this I guess you shouldn't feel bad about that I think um, maybe you found your thing yeah, like, I don't know. There's something about it that I feel is very um, therapeutic mm -hmm. in a way. I really like it. I really hot. like it. Also hot. If you want to be dominated, <laughs> call me. I'm, I'm really good at it. Um, okay, on that note, we have to end. Yeah. But I feel like that's perfect. Perfect. That's the note. Do you want me to tell you, you're a piece of shit. Go I'm to here. Iggy's OnlyFans. I sincerely she will tell you. We'll be happy to do But that. I also talk about Netflix and movies too. Perfect. No, she covers it I'm all. I'm multifaceted. Well, as we said... <laughs> Yeah.